flipped. A professional development program for higher degree supervisors and students. Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University. Welcome to this flipped professional development session on the video abstract. These flipped sessions have a lot of purposes. One is to try and introduce new and emerging ideas to you, and then you can use your candidature to develop these new ideas, develop new skills, and present yourself at your best. So let's have a look at the video abstract. And let's start with what it is, and then how you can use it in your research, and then a series of pretty quick and dirty (laughs) instructions about how to create one for yourself. Okay, so what is a video abstract? It is the video equivalent of, no surprises here, a written abstract. It is an emerging genre, and it has particular characteristics. It's short, it's about five minutes in length, three to five is probably best, It provides an overview for viewers, perspective readers, to hook you into an article. The video abstract is also about speed, helping a viewer work out the purpose of the research and, of course, the results of the research. It is a way to lift your citations very quickly, and a 2014 study, that's a decade ago, confirmed that while currently only 5% of publications have a video abstract, it lifts citations by 25 to 30%. Okay, so what is the focus of a video abstract? Firstly, you present the rationale for the study, the methods you used, and most importantly, the implications for the research. Video abstracts are a new mode of academic communication. They connect the researcher with the research, but with the viewer. This is important because it allows us as researchers to market and to brand our research. The key is to be clear about what you are doing so that your audience can find you. Work out who your audience is too. Is your audience purely other academics? That's terrific, that's great. But is your audience also an array of other stakeholders? Now work out who that audience is, be clear, and therefore when you're writing your video abstract, selecting your vocabulary, you can directly target those different audiences. And remember, if you're writing translational research, use the video abstract to link to those audiences. The audience for the article will determine the vocabulary that you choose. All right, what is the best use of a video abstract? Well, for the natural sciences and engineering, video abstracts allow a visualisation of complex research projects. For the humanities and the social sciences, the applications of your research can be made really clear for a diversity of audiences. The video abstract allows us all to make our article special, make it a special moment and lift it above the thousands of other articles that are appearing each week. The best video abstract introduces a written article but moves modes, moves media to enlarge the audience. It is a way to attract readers to the article but also to create a multimodal user experience. A range of journals are using video abstracts. Physics Education, for example, the publishers Cell Press, and of course they have their own YouTube channel. And let's just list the publishers that are now doing this. Copernicus Publications, Elsevier, Wiley, Dove Press, Emerald Group, We Share Science, and Taylor and Francis Journals have a Vimeo channel. Wiley have committed very strongly to the video abstract and they describe it as, quote, bringing research to life, end of quote. If you want to simply do a video abstract, well, where do you start? So you want to do one, great, I've got an article, let's do this. Okay, well, let's, let's start simply. You can use the camera app on your smartphone, no worries at all, but get yourself a tripod. And if you're interested in moving into a camera beyond your mobile phone, then a good camera that I recommend is the Zoom camera. 
the zoom camera. They're best known for their microphones, but they also produce good cameras that are very effective for this purpose. Now, a reasonable tripod costs you about $25. Don't spend more than $50. It's a tripod. Uh, (laughs) Keep it simple. Remember, you're giving three to five minutes straight to camera. Now, you must script it. Don't speak off the cuff. And what I need you to do, it has a very clear structure, this short bit of content. Introduce yourself. So you, who the hell are you? Tell the people. Then state the title of the paper. Then present the most important bit of information first. What have you discovered? Why should the audience care? Why should they read your work? Now, in journalism, this is called do not bury the lead. Don't bury the lead. Put the lead, the big issue, why do I care, right at the front. If it's an empirical piece, tell us about the data and your interpretation. Explain how it transforms taken-for-granted knowledge, taken-for-granted practices or behaviour. If it's a theoretical piece, good on you. How does this research change our thinking about a particular topic. Again, the goal is to connect your research to an audience of scholars or practitioners or humans that you want to read it. Now, let's talk about you and the camera. I won't lie to you, live pieces to camera are tough. (laughs) I've done one a week for about eight years now. It's tough. And I certainly understand why so many people get nervous and get worried. So the first step is to acknowledge, yep, this is this is tough. This is a new skill set and I'm way outside of my comfort zone. And remember, write a script, learn it, three to five minutes. So really that's about half a page to maybe one page of prose, but it's probably in between half a page and a page. So it's not a lot. And I need you to look directly at the camera lens. When I train people in the media, I start with sonic media, like you're listening to me now. And the reason sonic media is used is firstly, it's easier because we are training for one sensory experience, that is hearing. And there are a couple of tricks with sound. You must not sound like you're reading a script, so you're reading prose in a way that must be natural and clear and conversational and intimate. Most people listen through headphones, so you are literally whispering into someone's ear. So it's important that we make it personal and personable. The second trick with sound, and I know this appears a bit weird, is that you, and I'll use the dreadful phrase I use a lot, You've got to try and push emotion into your throat. Now, what I mean by this is an audience has few cues sonically to understand a narrative, whether it's emotion or emphasis. So your job is to convey emphasis through your tone. So if something's funny, put a tickle into your voice. If something's upsetting, put a tear into your throat. The goal is warmth. The goal is emotional range. Now, the only reason I'm talking about voice here, and we'll do other training on sonic media, but the reason I've stressed the voice here is because in visual media discussions, the importance of sound is often overshadowed. But before you deliver a video abstract, just think about your voice and your vocal delivery. Make it lively, convey interest, convey energy. So now to the visual elements. The visual abstract is a genre, it is still developing, so the line between formality and informality is still in flux. But use the direct gaze, look directly at the camera lens. This can be unnerving, but if you do need to eyeball the lens, because if you don't, it looks weird, right? Even if you're five degrees off, it's seriously disturbing for the viewer. It sort of looks like you're looking at something over their shoulder. It's a bit disturbing. So remember, pretend, and this is the trick I use, pretend that the lens is actually one of your friends and you're having a chat with them. So you're sitting at a table chatting with a friend, telling them about your article. That's probably the right tone. And that will remove the stiffness from your delivery and create the warmth and the connection that you need for visual media. Don't be nervous because remember, you have complete control over this process. You can have multiple goes. Have multiple goes. No stress on yourself. And remember, you are not 
reading your written abstract. That is a bad use of the video abstract genre. Introduce yourself, present your title, sell the article. And let me explain what that means. Answer these questions for me. Why should I care about this article? Why should I give a damn? Why should I bother to read it? Okay, answer me that. That's your video abstract. Right. Most of the journals and the publishers that do this have a YouTube channel. And once uploaded, really, your real work commences. So send that link through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, academia.edu, ResearchGate, whatever you like. Make sure that wherever the article is listed or discussed, the video abstract starts to follow it and list your URL on your CV. Can I say, I've just created a new line, new heading on my CV for video abstracts, right? So if your journal doesn't do video abstracts, doesn't matter at all, do them anyway. When the piece is published, do a three to five minute piece to camera and then send that link around all your social media channels with the link to the piece. And remember, the crucial bit of this is in the information section for the YouTube video, present the link to the article. Remember, we're doing all of this for multiple reasons, but one is to lift the citations of the article. So therefore, make sure if people look at your video abstract and go, yeah, this is is interesting, that they can very easily simply click to the article and then read it and then cite it. So why would you want to do any of this? The video abstract allows you to raise the visibility of both your article, but also you. So via Google, video has a higher ranking than text-based sources. Research dissemination is the key stage in all of our research careers. Writing, going through refereeing and publishing, that's not enough. We all have a responsibility to find an audience for our research, and the video abstract is a new and powerful way to do that. Thank you so much for your time, and I really look forward to talking about you and you creating video abstracts in our flipped seminar. See you soon.